Hello everybody and welcome to the fundamentals of electrical power systems for Bayer refineries. Today I would like to introduce you to the fundamentals of the electrical power supply and the electrical power systems. For the electrical power system we apply of course the law of conservation of energy. That means electrical energy can neither be destroyed nor can it be invented but only electrical energy and energy as a whole can be transformed from one form of energy into another form. So that's given by this first line that means the energy in a system which is the world, our world, the universe is constant. And this equation is time invariant so the way we may differentiate that and the differential of the energy is the electrical power. So that means power cannot be destroyed, cannot be invented, it can only be transported and formed from one energy to the other energy. The different form of energies are given in this table and I think for electrical engineers the electrical field energy is quite interesting and important. That is, uh, it comes into existence when voltage is applied to a capacitor or to any conducting arrangements of bodies which are conducting in space. So if we have electric field between bodies in space, we have electric field energy. Another form of energy which is important in electrical power system is the magnetic energy. The magnetic field energy comes when there is a flow of current through a line, for example, a wire, a line, then the space around this line is filled with magnetic field and this magnetic field constitutes magnetic energy. Then there is potential energy, for example the height of a stone lying on a table or an electrical engineer, the energy that is stored in a water basin of a hydro plant. Then we have kinetic energy like the speed of a motor vehicle and this in electrical terms of electrical engineering is the mechanical en energy that is stored in the rotating masses of generators and turbines. Then the other forms of energy are not so important in electrical engineering. At the bottom we see the conversion of the typical units. Electrical energy is measured mainly, mainly as kilowatt hours. The physical term for the kilowatt hours is the joule and the conversion between kilowatt hours and joule is given here. Now follow me to the wonderful world of the Sankei diagram. The Sankei diagram describes the flow of energy and as we have already heard energy cannot be destroyed and invented but if it flows it is kept constant. And that is shown here in this slide during the flow of energy from for example crude oil products which form fossil usable energy into the final users like traffic, industry, households and so on. But I would suggest we concentrate on the electrical power system. The electrical power system needs an input from other forms electrical of energy like hydropower, natural gas, like oil products and also biomass which is given as coal and wood for example into the power stations in the power stations the energy is converted, the useful energy goes down, that is in this design here it goes down and on the other hand we have some losses. Unfortunately we do not need the losses but the losses are existence. They are due to the poor efficiencies of power conversion units like thermal machines. So the, electri the useful energy that is coming out of the st power stations is again split into the electrical energy that is used by the house households, the electrical energy that goes into industry and electrical energy that goes into traffic. For example, in forms of electric trains, trams, trolleybuses and so on. So. The classification of energy from the top to the bottom is given in terms of primary energy or raw energy, in terms of secondary energy 
and the final energy where we as end users are interested in. Note please that the losses still are quite high in all these final circuits and final consumer levels, which is a pity and where we should try to avoid this and to reduce the losses and to increase efficiency. So what is it always important about a Sanke diagram, diagram is that the input or the broads, the width of these lines is exactly the same as the output, as the width of these two lines added together. You will see it also here. This is the measure for the input into the, from secondary energy and the output which goes to the, as final energy to the consumers. So this was the first and introducing chapter about the fundamentals of electrical power supply. The next one will be about loads. And for further information, please turn to the script. I thank you very much.